Welcome to the final part of Felden's story, Lorraine's smile. It's gonna be good. You're gonna like it, I'm sure. And when you do, make sure you leave a like. Felden was three days from his village when he heard of the scholar in a small town further west. Propelled in part by curiosity, in part by dread, Felden turned his wagon westward. He found the scholar in the musty remains of a temple library. The building had been shattered long ago by an earthquake, and the snows and rains had rotted most of the books. Yet among the tattered remains of books and scrolls, the scholar hopped like a bird-shaped automaton. He was a spindly thing, and regarded Felden from behind thick lenses of crystal. Felden spoke of his tale, of his loss, of his resolve to regain what he had lost. He told of the hermit, the sorceress, the master of the swamp. And when he finished his story, the scholar blinked at him behind heavy lenses. What do you want? Felden let out an exasperated sigh. I want to have Loran back. If magic can do everything, why can it not do this? Of course it can do this, said the scholar. The question is, do you want it to? Now it was Felden's turn to blink, and the scholar gave a thin, amused smile. Green calls to living, he said. Black calls to the dead. Blue creates a shadow of life. Red consumes. And that's very important as well, because you must often destroy before you can build. I study, and the magic I wield is white, which is the magic of comprehension and understanding. Can you bring her back to life? Asked Felden, his voice catching. The memory of the swamp was still with him. No, nope, I can't, said the scholar, and despite himself, felt inside in relief. But I can help you to create an exact duplicate. I tried that with the automaton, said Feld. I speak of a creation not of gears and wires, but of magic, replied the scholar. Identical in every way. I don't understand. When you cast a spell using fire, explained the scholar, I believe you do not create fire. Rather, you take the magical energy and form it into the shape of fire, which then does your bidding. It is for all intents and purposes fire, but it is made of magic. But what about when I use fire? asked Felden. Or when the hermit calls a great worm? The scholar waved his hand. Different uses for the same tools. Yet, in those cases, it is a real fire and a real worm, but the magic alters it. For the moment, assume that you can create something made of magical energy. Felden thought about it and nodded slowly. So, if you study an object, you can create the object over time. Again, Felden nodded. If you study me, he said, you would be studying that which makes me a scholar. Therefore, you could call at a later time that part of me which is my scholarliness and rely on its advice. Felden shook his head. I'm not sure I understand, he said. Study me for two weeks, said the scholar, and then see if you understand. Don't talk to me, just bring me my meals. Two weeks, that's my price. That and later, you'll have to let me and other scholars into your library. Is it a bargain? For the next two weeks, Felden brought the scholar his meals, in much the same way as he had brought Loran hers when she was bedfooted. Felden used his magic to keep a small flame going and to cook for the scholar as he pawed through the rotting texts and decaying scrolls of the ruined temple. For the first two days, the scholar seemed little more than an amusing bird, hopping from one location to another. But soon, Felden noticed there was method to the madness, that there was intent behind each of the scholar's movements. He began to see how the man thought and knew. Through it all, the scholar ignored him, save at mealtimes. At the end of the two weeks, the little man turned to Felden and said, Summon me. Felden shook his head. Pardon? You have watched me for two weeks, said the scholar. Now see if you can use your magics to bring me into being. Felden blinked. Mm, but you're already here. So bring another me, said the scholar. You've got the power. Use it. Felden took a deep breath and called upon the powers of the land. 
He thought of the nervous scholar in his thick spectacles rummaging relentlessly through the decaying paper and rotting vellum. He tried to call a being that summed up the nature of the creature in one place. There was a pause. And then, an identical duplicate of the scholar appeared. No, not identical. It was taller, and his flesh had a ruddier hue. But it was thin and nervous, and had thick spectacles and annoying manner. The scholar, the real one, walked up to the created being and looked over his glasses at it. The duplicate did the same. Felden was amazed. Is it, is it real? He choked out at last. The scholar reached out and touched the quasi-duplicate, and the duplicate touched back. Feels like it, said the scholar. A lot of the little details are wrong, but you aren't just summoning me. You're summoning the essence of my meanness as a scholar. You can keep this me around by keeping that part of your mind aware of me. But it isn't. Me, that is. Felden worked his way around the scholar's thinking process. But what can I do with this you? What you would expect a scholar to do, returned the bespectacled man. Research, investigate, know certain things. In a slightly more excited voice, he added, But I wouldn't know anything about fighting or lands I had never visited or anything like that. It would be beyond my nature as a scholar. And I could do the same. With Loran, asked Felden. Both scholars nodded. Felden found the duplication unnerving and dismissed the power of the spell that held the magical scholar in place. He faded from view like snow in the rain. You can summon your lost love back, said the scholar. If that's what you truly want. Felden thought about the scholar's words on the way back to his home. The wagon shuddering through the deep ruts in the road. It was raining again by the time he returned, and the servants had kindled a fire in the hearth. Before he entered the house, he checked Loran's grave. Beneath the inert, rusting form of the automaton, the earth was undisturbed, and that made him feel slightly better. He thanked the servants and retreated to his workshop. There, among the tables draped with cloth and the reagents settled into multicolored layers in their beakers, he allowed himself to remember. He remembered Loran, not just the feel of her touch, but the way her hair moved like a dark waterfall. He remembered her, when she was happy, when she was angry. When she was gardening, when she was dying. Felton thought of Loran, the life she spent with him, of the tales of her youth, of their work and lives together. The joy of life with her and the sadness of her departure felt like a great bubble rising within him. He fed his memories of the land into that bubble, memories of the mountains, the forest, the shore, the swamps, and the temple, and he filled it with power and life. When Felton opened his eyes, Loran was there. She was perfect, and whole, and as young as when he first met her at the gates of Teresia City. She gave him a knowing smile and said, Why am I here? You died, said Felden, his voice choking as he spoke. She nodded and said, I seem to remember that. Why am I here? You're here because I missed you, said Felden. I missed you as well replied the spell Loran, and she reached out to him. Despite himself, Felden shrank from her embrace. She paused and asked, What's wrong? You're not her, he said at last. No, I am not, she said. Her voice in the lilting or giving accent he remembered. We both know that, and you know that I could be nothing less than what you remember of her. You remember her as being honest and strong. I am the sum of her. Taken through your feelings, I am what you remember. You are memories, sighed Felton. And though you are pleasant memories, I must leave you as memories. If you are here, you are no more than the automaton in the garden. Unliving. An imitation of what was. I'm sorry I went to so much trouble to bring you about but I know that I cannot keep you. Then why am I here? She said. You are here, said Felton, taking a deep breath, so that I can say goodbye. The spell Loran paused, then smiled slightly. I understand, 
she said at last. Felton crossed to her and embraced her. She felt very much like Loran as he had known her. All that was Loran in his memories was encased in the spell creature he had created. When they parted, there were tears in both of their eyes. Goodbye, he said, his voice thick with emotion. Goodbye, she replied. Felton allowed the spell to elapse, and the form of Loran began to dissolve. I understand, he said to her vanishing form. At last, I think I understand. All that was left was a knowing, soft smile. Then that was gone as well. Felden returned to the work in his library and workshop, taking up small matters that had been abandoned ages ago. In a few weeks, the scholar appeared at Felden's doorstep and was amused to see that, save for the servants, Felden was alone. After a meal, the bird-like scholar asked, What became of your lost love? And she was lost, said Felden with a deep sigh, and it was beyond my power to bring her back. It was beyond my desire. But I had a chance to say goodbye. That is what you truly wanted? Asked the scholar. That is what I truly wanted, said Felden. The scholar spent three weeks in Felden's library and then left. But he promised to send interested students to the grizzled man's home. Every so often, some would-be scholar or mage would appear. And Felden, remembering his promise, would let the wizard go through the library. Over dinner, he would tell his own story of what he had learned about magic. Sometimes the aspiring mage would listen politely, sometimes intently. Occasionally, after everyone had gone to bed, a mage would creep down and find Felden sitting by the fire. The flames twisted into the form of a smile, a soft and knowing smile. And Felden, the ancient wizard, seemed to be content. Felden is finally content. It's one of my favorite stories. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. It's one of my favorites. I hope you guys leave a like. I hope you guys share this with your friends, the whole three-part series. And I hope that you leave comments so that I can make more stuff like this in the future because this was really fun for me. It's not just me yelling at a, at a TV screen. This is, this is like, this is my childhood. It's what I grew up with. So any stories you guys have that you might want to share with me, definitely share it. And if I feel like it would be good for the show, for the channel, I'll definitely show it to you guys and read it for you. Until then, travel well.